I'm here with Michael D. Armstrong. He's the Executive Vice President for Brand Development at Viacom International. Yep. Thank you for being here today. The students really enjoyed what you had to say. Um, so for starters, I just wanted to ask you if you could talk a little bit about your background and how you've climbed up the corporate ladder. Yeah, well, I, I've been at Viacom 17 years, mm -hmm. and I started selling our channels to cable operators in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Midwest. And, you know, I just made sure that I was... I understood what I was doing. I had good client relationships. I had good internal relationships. And over time, as I, I got my MBA part-time, and I had an opportunity to move to New York for a marketing job. Mm -hmm. And I did that for a few years and then had an opportunity to go to international, which is really the growing area of our business. It still is. Mm -hmm. And I've been in international now for 11 years, and I've had a, the blessings of having people take a chance on me to give me a chance to do more and more. With your job, do you get to travel a lot? I have to travel a lot. Yeah, I'm on the I'm on airplanes a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I matter of fact, I, I had an in 2012 an interview um, for an award I got, and they asked me specifically how many miles had I logged, and I went and looked <laughs> in my accounts, and at that point I was over a million and a half. So I'm probably close to two million miles um, logged. Wow. Okay, so can you talk about the shift and what you have to think about when you're trying to develop your brand in a place like the U.S. versus a place like India? Yeah, we have to think about what the local market cultures and local market forces are, mm -hmm. how we can get our brand distributed. Sometimes you can't own the, the distribution because they have foreign ownership rules. Mm -hmm. You have to have a local partner. Uh, like in India, we have a joint venture. with, with um, uh, It's called a group called Viacom 18 is a joint venture, and it's with Reliance. And we come together and create together because they've got local management and they understand the local marketplace better than we would coming from the U.S., and we can really grow the business together in a much more meaningful way. Can you talk about the generational shift and how that's affected working in television in general? Well, it, it affects us both in viewing habits. Mm -hmm. The generation behind the generation we've been programming to for the last 30 years watches television very differently. They consume content very differently, but also affects us on the employee side. You know, Generation X and, and millennials are who are now leading our organizations or in middle management in our organizations. And so how a millennial manages how we create content and get it to the audience is different than maybe how a baby boom or a Generation X person might have done so. Mm -hmm. So we have to think about it on all aspects of our business. Okay. You've been at MTV for 17 years, right? Oh, Viacom, yeah. Viacom. TV's parent company, yeah. Yes. Um, how has TV changed within those 17 years? I'm guessing a lot of technology. So what's the negative and the positive of it? Well, the positive is that we have been able to really work hard to keep up with the change. Um, I don't think there is a negative about the change because everything changes. And, and so for our business, it's changed enormously. You could, used to be able to program music videos and program a show, and people would just tune in to watch it in droves. When we launched the reality television genre with Real World, mm -hmm. Um, we did so, and it was just experiment on TV. Now everything is like a version of real world. Yeah. And so for us, we have to continue to innovate, and we like that challenge. Okay. You talked a little bit about um, cord cutting and the super consumer. So can you describe what those two are? Yeah, cord cutting is when people who have traditionally had a monthly cable bill and monthly cable subscription for a package of channels decides they would rather not pay that, mm -hmm. drop that service, and then just go buy TV by way of you know buying maybe a Netflix subscription or a Hulu subscription or just go online and watch the programs on the websites of the companies. Um, and that, of course, is driving people out of what has been the traditional business for us. The super consumers are those that have both traditional cable subscriptions plus they buy stuff on iTunes or on Google Play, plus they have a Netflix subscription or, a, uh, or an Amazon Prime subscription to watch programs or Hulu or the, or the like. Thank you. What are some of the shows that you've expanded from the like, U.S. to say? I know you from Jersey Shore went to Jersey Shore in England, and I love that show. So it was just I want, just want to know if you could describe some of the ones that you've taken and just distributed across the globe. Well, that's one of the best examples. If I go way back, um, we, we actually created local versions of Pimp My Ride. Oh, so wow. we had a version in Germany, a version in the U.K. with a local host. So instead of exhibit, we had... Uh, uh, local host in each of those markets, and it was in local language with local cars and, and the rest. Um, we lip sync battles one that we're really having success with and taking out to different markets where we're not making the show, but partners are buying the format from us to make the show. And so we're seeing that we have at least nine right now in local productions around the world, from China to to Canada to Chile, 
um, to Denmark. Do you think it's important for a professional like yourself to be on social media and utilize social media? Absolutely. I'm on social media all the time. I use it as a research tool as much as anything else to see what's going on. What are people saying about the brands that I manage around the world? Um, what are our advertisers doing in that space so I could figure out how we can work more closely with them?